The Rangers answer the critics and beat two fellow Eastern Conference powerhouses in the Bruins and the Panthers. Plus, Artemi Panarin continues to set the league on fire. And why was Will Cooley a healthy scratch? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1031 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So first and foremost, let me just apologize for not having an episode on Friday. We uh, very rarely do not get to five episodes in a week, but that was the case last week. We were away for the weekend and uh, had a really nice time with, with some family and everything, but I did miss an episode. And therefore, we got a lot to talk about today. We basically just got to hit the ground running because since we talked last, the Rangers defeated the Bruins in Boston, came home to the Garden, took down the Florida Panthers despite uh, trailing two to nothing in that game. So just an awesome couple of days of hockey here for the New York Rangers, and honestly, can't go a second farther in this episode without talking about who else, the bread man, Artemi Panarin, on fire, even by his own lofty standards that he set for himself this season, you know, the the three goals against the Bruins for the hat trick, and then two goals against the Panthers, plus the shootout winner as well, the guy is just all over the ice, just doing it all for the New York Rangers, uh, just absolutely leaving it all on the ice every single night. And it's just awesome to see uh, Artemi Panarin continue to play at this MVP level. I don't know that he'll end up winning the MVP. I'm biased. I think he should. I don't know there's a single player in this league that means as much to his team as Artemi Panarin means to the New York Rangers. And that's something, you know, we'll break down his MVP case. We'll, we'll do a whole episode on that a little bit later here, you know, maybe toward the end of the regular season, um, especially when the Rangers are playing some games that, you know, might not mean a whole lot. I mean, obviously the Metro could still be up for grabs and maybe, you know, playoff seating and what have you. But um, we know the Rangers are going to be going to the playoffs and hopefully by the, the very end, you know, they have everything locked up that they want to get locked up, including maybe the President's Trophy. You know, we'll see how that goes. That could come down, could come down to the wire. Uh, we'll see. But as for Artemi Panarin, I mean, just, just phenomenal hockey. I'm running out of uh, adjectives to describe what Artemi Panarin is doing for the Rangers this season. But of course, he gets the hat trick. Any 5-2 to win in Boston against the Bruins uh, scored it twice in the second period to turn a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 to lead for the Rangers. To kind of just go through his night and, uh, you know, look at the goals. That, that's another thing that's really impressed me is the variety of goals that Artemi Panarin is scoring this season, and especially lately. And I'll uh, elaborate on that in just a minute. But first goal of the game, again, Rangers down 1-0. You get Lafreniere moving the puck. Uh, he's in the neutral zone, up the boards to Braden Schneider. Schneider with a centering pass after taking the puck up the right side. And a little bit of a broken play. You know, the Bruins got a stick on it, made a play, but Panarin was able to take it back. And he goes five hole to tie the score at one to one. And then late in the second period, just 35 seconds to go, in fact, uh, he ends up scoring an unassisted goal. You can give Alex Wenberg sort of an unofficial assist on this play because he was out on the ice with Panarin at this time, and he was pressuring the puck behind the net. Wenberg's really done a nice job so far for the Rangers. He's not going to lay up the score sheet on any given night, but just does a lot of the little things and, um, you know, four checks very well and is obviously a very good defensive four. But he's putting on some pressure, as is Panarin. Uh, Wenberg's pressure basically caused the Bruins to fumble away the puck. Panarin picks up the puck. He tries to actually pass to Wenberg on the other side of the net. Instead, one or two bounces off the Bruins and into the net. And then, of course, uh, Panarin gets the empty netter to, you know, Mika had already scored an empty netter. That made it 4-2. to two. But then Panarin with the other empty netter makes it 5-2. to two. And at that point, um, you know, turn out the lights. And obviously, the Rangers are going home with a win. And then against the Panthers, I mean, I know that the hat trick was against the Bruins. But you could honestly argue that Panarin played even better against the Panthers. Again, it just feels like he's all over the night, all over the, the ice, excuse me, on every single night. And... You know, there was actually a play in this game where th this got a good reaction from the crowd, too. The puck is along the boards on the, you know, Rangers side of the ice. And I want to say it was uh, Keandre Miller and 
Uh, Panther were kind of, you know, battling for the puck there. It was a Ranger defenseman, and Panarin comes, you know, flying back, and he sees his chance, and he knocks his guy down to the ice with a big hit, and, and the crowd did react to that. Uh, about as big of a hit as you're going to get from Panarin. But again, the guy's just, uh, he's been a little bit more physical this year. And I think, I've said this all along, I don't think Panarin at all is a bad defensive forward. I think he's actually a pretty solid defensive forward. He seems to make plays on the puck. And again, he's just going full bore in every aspect of the game every time he's on the ice. And that's just awesome to see a uh, true MVP candidate if ever there was one. But as far as the goals in this game, the Rangers are down 2-0. You've got Adam Fox scoring on... The power play, um, that obviously gets the Rangers back into the game down just two to one at that point. And then just two minutes, one second later, you've got our Timmy Panarin following up. Uh, he receives a pass from Vincent Trocek. A little bit of a sharp angle for Panarin, but this is not a problem scoring from this spot on the ice. Uh, Panarin winds back, just blasts a one-timer, top shelf. He scores, ties the game at two to two. And then, of course, another big-time clutch goal by our Timmy Panarin uh, late in this game. You've got Carter Verhey giving the Panthers a lead with uh, four oh eight to play. That put the Panthers back up three to two, and then forty three seconds later, you've got Artemi Panarin tying the the score at that point. Uh, basically, well, first of all, I should point out the fact that the Panarin line was on the ice immediately following the goal scored by the Panthers, and that's important because that is the Ranger best line, and obviously it's crunch time at this portion of the game. And indeed, you go with Panarin, uh, Lafreniere, and Trocheck. You got Panarin dumping the puck. Uh, he eventually gets the puck in the corner, plays it back to Jones. Uh, Jones is there at the blue line. Jones gives it back to Panarin, and Panarin's kind of circling, turns back toward the net, and fires it at the net. A couple of deflections, and it goes in. Uh, initially, the announcers thought that uh, Lafreniere had scored this goal here, and uh, I know we uh, give the ABC slash ESPN announcers a hard time, but honestly, it, it was very easy to believe that. But you know, by the time Lafreniere got his stick on the puck, the puck was already in. Uh, a little bit of a... Fortunate deflection for the Rangers, but the way Panarin is going right now, you know, a couple of these goals over the last couple of games, uh, certainly he got a, a fortunate bounce of the puck or two. But you know what? When you're going pedal the, to the metal and playing MVP hockey and just locked in to every single game, every single night, the way that Artemi Panarin has been all season and even more so lately, uh, I think you were in a couple of those breaks. And, and that certainly seemed to be the case um, in these two games here against the Bruins and the Panthers. And then we end up in overtime. Panarin's not done. You know, he's got, at this point, we're going to overtime. Panarin has scored five goals in the past two games combined, but uh, he kept going. And I also just want to point out the fact that starting the overtime period was Panarin, Trocek, and Adam Fox. I've said over and over, when it comes to 3v3 overtime hockey, this is the trio that needs to start on the ice for the Rangers. To begin with, uh, Trocek and Panarin can very easily make the argument that they have been the two best and most consistent Ranger forwards all season. I mean, you know, there, there's other guys in the mix there too, but um, those those two are certainly in the running. And you've got, I mean, Panarin needs to be on the ice because it's Panarin. I mean, we don't really have to break down any more details other than that. Um, but Trocek's out there. He's played great this season. He's got good speed, which I think you also want in 3v3 overtime hockey when there's so much open ice, but also very good bet to win the faceoff is Vincent Trocek and Adam Fox. I mean, look, you could go with uh, Keandre Miller. We've seen Jacob Trouba when he's healthy out there in this spot. Adam Fox, one of the absolute best defensemen in the world. He should be the guy out there. And of course, you know, nobody scored in the overtime period, but we go to the shootout. Uh, Mika made some just unreal moves in the shootout, uh, went one way and then kind of slid the puck back to his backhand and just kind of slipped it into the net there. Uh, so he scored in the shootout and then the Panthers tie it. Uh, Panarin, 57% success rate in his career going into this, but actually only one for four so far this season. So you just felt like he was due, and indeed he does score here. He goes really wide to the left. I mean, he could have reached out and touched the boards if he wanted to, but he makes some really nifty moves on the doorstep and scores under the glove. And from that point on, uh, nobody scored. You know, Lundell lost control of the puck. Uh, Trocek took a shot for the Rangers, but he was denied. And then a former Ranger... Uh, actually not scoring. Vladimir Tarasenko gets an opportunity, and Igor Shosturkin makes a nice save there. So uh, just a great win, a hard-earned win, down by two goals. And honestly, everybody on the team deserves credit. I mean, I think when you're down by two goals to one of the best teams in the league, to the defending Eastern Conference champions, and in a game where the Rangers were doing basically next to nothing until they got those two goals about six and seven minutes into the second period, 
Um, yeah, everybody probably has a hand in that. And I think that was certainly the case here, but with what our Temi Panarin has been doing, I mean, we have to single him out. He's just been absolutely unbelievable for the entire season. And I mean, up there with one of the best free agent signings in Ranger history, uh, you could certainly, I, I think he very easily makes the Mount Rushmore of Ranger free agent signings. And if you want to take it a step further than that, can, can you consider him the best ever? It's at least possible. I mean, we'll see how everything shakes out. I think certainly a Stanley cup this year would uh, bolster his resume in that regard. But um, he's just been amazing. Just just an amazing hockey player and just a joy to watch him play. Now is up to 43 goals and 56 assists. So he's got uh, 99 points in 71 games thus far this season. And I mentioned a little earlier, a little earlier in the episode, the variety of goals that Artemi Panarin is scoring is very impressive. And I, I talked about how, you know, maybe a lucky bounce or two over these last handful of games here. But, I mean, he's scoring on the power play. He's now scoring one-timers. He's just got a nasty wrist shot. He's shooting high to score. He's shooting low to score. He's going five-hole. He's picking a corner here and there. Um, this is the man that Henrik Lundqvist once said had the most accurate shot of anybody that he's ever played against. And it's just so nice and so refreshing to see Artemi Panarin do what a lot of us have been wanting to see him do for you know, a couple of years, really, ever since he's been a Ranger. And he's been a fantastic player since he's been here. Don't get me wrong, but I think there's a lot of us, um, I know certainly myself, that have wanted to see our Timmy Panarin shoot the puck a little bit more often. He's finally doing it this year, and wouldn't you know it, just shattering uh, his previous career high in goals scored. So he's just been uh, just a phenomenal player, and um, just can't wait to, you know, continue to watch him going forward this season. And then uh, I think um, it's finally going to be his year in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And he's had good playoff runs before, but in terms of like being that guy that goes out there and just takes over, I think this might be Artemi Panarin's year. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that that is indeed the case. We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to turn our attention to something kind of controversial that happened, uh, you know, in this most recent game against the Panthers, really before the game, and that was the decision to scratch Will Cooley. We're going to break that down, talk a little bit about some other Rangers hitting some milestones as well, and we're going to get to all that fun stuff in just a second. But first, definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Game Time. You should not have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. And use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Did want to let everybody know that, uh, of course, you know, locked on has launched the first ever 24 7 streaming channel. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Obviously, a little bit of controversy before this Panther game, you know, between the Rangers and the Panthers. Uh, a couple of uh, Ranger fans, at least on social media, were not happy about this. And that was, of course, the decision from Peter LaViolette to make Will Cooley a healthy scratch for the first time this season. And that also meant that the Rangers went with a lineup uh, that was as follows. We're, we know the top six. We'll, we'll leave that alone. But the bottom six looked like this. Uh, left to right on the third line, Brodzinski, Wenberg, and Kako. And then the fourth line, VZ, Goodrow, Rempe. And we might as well just mention the defenseman because that's obviously been kind of fluid lately with uh, both Lindgren and Truba missing some time here. But you had Gustafson and Fox, Miller and Schneider, Jones and Ruedel. Now, Will Cooley, I mean, you can see why people were upset about this. He obviously made the team based on a very strong training camp this year and a very solid preseason as well. And he had played all 70 games of the season before this one. 
Uh, 12 goals, eight assists. He's a plus four, 227 hits. The last I checked, that was still tops among all NHL rookies. So a very physical player. Now, I will say I was a little surprised that Will Cooley uh, was forced to sit this one out as a healthy scratch. But when you stop to think about it, it's not a massive shock. And I don't think it's as big of a deal as a lot of people were making it out to be. I probably would have had him out there for a game against the Panthers. Again, a fellow heavyweight. Uh, it's a big time matchup here. And uh, Will Cooley has obviously played very, very well this season. But then when you kind of look at the whole situation here, again, I, I love the consistency that Cooley has played with this season. And I probably would have had him in the lineup. But uh, Peter Laviolette not long ago made it clear that he has 13 forwards right now on this roster that he feels very, very good about, and that there was going to be a little bit of a rotation. Now, I didn't know how far that rotation was going to go, if that just meant like, you know, Brodzinski and Rempe were going to kind of rotate games, or uh, maybe like VZ would come out at one time or another. I mean, I would say Goodrow and, you know, I mean, he, they're, they're probably not going to scratch Goodrow. They, he might get healthy scratch one game here just because, you know, they've made it obvious that they're going to do that and they're going to have a couple of different guys sit out here and there. But um, Goodrow, I, I don't see them doing that. He's just too well-respected. And, um, you know, that the contract does talk at least a little bit. I, I just don't see him being a healthy scratch for any amount of time. Maybe like one game, but, but I, I can't see it going any farther than that. But bottom line, I mean, this is what uh, Laviolette had to say. Uh, regarding you know the whole situation here. We got a dozen games left. I hope we remain healthy. If we do remain healthy, I'm going to have to make those decisions. I'd just rather see everybody ready to play in the playoffs. Uh, he went on to say, communicated that to the players and just let them know they got to be patient. And indeed, you know, it is a good problem to have right now. Uh, if you're the Rangers, there's a, a lot of fours that deserve playing time. And uh, unfortunately, it's just kind of a numbers game right now. And every single night, you're going to have at least one deserving forward not play when he should be in the lineup. But again, it's just a numbers game, and uh, there are some difficult decisions to make. And as we've said in the past, when, when you're looking at a scenario like that, it's the very definition of a good problem to have. But as far as like people you know, really upset about Cooley being taken out of the lineup, I think it's fine. I'd be stunned if he's not back out there uh, against the Flyers. I mean, I guess you never know for sure, obviously, uh, the Rangers won this game against the Panthers. Sometimes after a big win, coaches don't like to mess with the lineup, but they mess with the lineup after the win against the Bruins, right? You know, Cooley came out, Brodzinski went right back in. So I think they'll stick with this rotation and you'll see Cooley go back into the lineup. As far as who comes out, I mean, could be VZ, could be Goodrow, could be Brodzinski again, could be Rempe again. I don't think it would be Rempe because you're playing the Flyers. You expect there could be some problems there. So uh, that being the case, I would imagine Rempe will be out there. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, another point that uh, some of you guys have made, and I, I think it does have some merit and it started with Matt Rempe when he was a healthy scratch and it continued, uh, with Will Cooley being a healthy scratch. The Rangers right now are down a couple of their more physical, more, you know, tough guy, old school snarl type players in both Jacob Truba and Ryan Lindgren. And that being the case that would kind of, um, support the case for guys like Matt Rempe and guys like Will Cooley being in the lineup. We knew, you know, playing the Bruins, it can get nasty, uh, can get very physical. Same thing against the Panthers. You know, the Panthers are a physical team too. And, you know, that being the case, that you're already down to your tougher, harder-hitting defenseman, you want guys like Will Cooley and Matt Rempe into the lineup. Um, so I, I definitely get where Ranger fans are coming from uh, when they do make that claim. Um, but I'm just not going to lose my mind over Will Cooley being a healthy scratch for one game. Keep this in mind too. Cooley this year is going to play more hockey games than he's ever played in his life. Now he played a lot last year. If we look back to last season, 69 regular season games uh, for Will Cooley with the Hartford Wolfpack, another nine playoff games with the pack as well, and four regular season games with the Raiders. So that's 82 games. Uh, that's a full slate of NHL hockey. If you want to look at it that way, that's also the most that he's ever played. And he will eclipse that this season, you know, barring something completely unforeseen, Rangers are going to make the playoffs. Uh, he will go beyond that number. And the Rangers are also in a situation here where they just wrapped up a stretch of 15 days where they played nine games. Will Cooley, I mean, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm not saying he can't handle it. But the fact is, I don't think he has ever played probably that many games in that few days, at least not at any kind of, you know, high level. I, I don't think the Wolfpack typically play that much in that amount of time. So um, it probably wasn't the worst thing to give him a day. Again, you know, I mean, on one hand, it'd be cool to see him play all 82 games, right? But that's not what's important here. What's important is making sure all these guys are 
ready to go for the playoffs. And if Laviolette and the coaching staff felt that he could use a day and that this is a good time to do it, then I tend to trust them because most of what this coaching staff has touched this year has turned to gold. Not everything. We're not always going to agree with every single move that they make, but I do feel like, you know, Laviolette and the whole coaching staff, they tend to have the pulse of this team uh, far more often than not. And again, it, to me, I'm just not going to lose my mind about it. And for anybody that's you know upset about the scratching, rest assured, I would bet anything. Will Cooley will be out there for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Whomever the Ranger opponent might be, um, he will be there. He's obviously been a big part of the team this season. If Will Cooley had done anything wrong this season, you know, he is a rookie. Um, you know, we, we would have seen him be a healthy scratch a lot earlier than this. So the fact that it's only happened once, and this might be the only time that it happens all season, I think you got to take that. Will Cooley's had a heck of a season here. And, um, you know, if I, I do have to pick an odd man out for the playoffs and the playoffs do start, if I had to take a guess at it, I would think it would probably be Brodzinski. I just get the feeling Goodrow is going to be out there for the reasons I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Rempe, intimidating presence, physical, net front presence. Um, he can fight if you have to. It depends, you know, the playoffs, you know, there's some fighting, not so much late in series because teams don't want to take a penalty. But, um, you know, R Rempe's going to have his place and I think he'll be out there. And again, it's not anything Brodzinski has done wrong. I just get the feeling that uh, by process of elimination, he'll probably be the guy uh, that sits come playoff time. But we'll see. Never know what can happen between now and then. I figure we'll keep everything rolling in just a second here. I know the uh, Bruins game was a couple days ago, but there were some uh, some interesting things that happened in that game. Obviously, we already covered the Panarin hat trick. A couple of milestones achieved for some players and a coach for the Rangers as well. So we'll discuss that. A couple of other things as well in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Sleeper. We are down the home stretch of the season, Ranger fans, and the Rangers have basically been on top of the Metro Division from coast to coast. But regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Panarin or Lafreniere or Trocek or Igor will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Ranger fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL. And you will get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers, terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. I uh, wanted to cover a couple of uh, things that happened in the Boston game. Like I said, it's been a little while since, you know, we all got to talk some Rainer hockey together here, but obviously some good things have happened since we uh, last talked. Some very impressive Wins by the Rangers over some fellow Eastern Conference heavy, heavyweights. And, of course, that began with a 5-2 to two win against the Bruins. And, of course, we already discussed the Artemi Panarin hat trick. But something else that was really cool in this game, Jonathan Quick becoming the all-time winningest American-born goalie. And, obviously, he did the vast majority of that with the Los Angeles Kings. But having a resurgent, awesome season here for the New York Rangers. And, obviously, somebody that uh, seems to really kind of give this team a boost behind the scenes. We heard from Vegas last year about how he was great for that locker room. And it seems like uh, the same can be said for, you know, his time with the New York Rangers here as well. And he gets to enjoy just an awesome milestone, quick ties. Ryan Miller uh, for the most wins by an American born goalie with 391. And I just wanted to point out because they had this graphic on the screen during this game. As far as um, American, born goalies with the most wins ever. Rangers very well represented. you got John Van Beesbrook. He has 374, good for third all-time. And also Mike Richter at 301 is sixth all-time. So I just wanted to point that out. That's kind of a cool thing. And again, just an amazing season in the middle, or I guess toward the end of an amazing career. Obviously, Quick got the uh, contract extension from the Rangers uh, a couple of weeks ago and very well-deserved. Happy he's going to be back next season. This is something I've mentioned, but I haven't talked about it in a while. I just think it really speaks volumes about how well he's played, how respected he is, and how much he's liked 
by his teammates where, you know, Ranger fans have taken a Jonathan Quick so fast. And keep in mind, this is the guy that beat them in the Stanley Cup final about 10 years ago. And, you know, Ranger fans, sometimes when you bring in like kind of a veteran player who's maybe past his prime a little bit, there'll kind of be some grumbles and like, uh, why are we bringing in this guy? You know, he's, he's 37, he's 38. Uh, he's not a good player anymore. This, that, and the other thing. Now, obviously, Quick's acceptance by Ranger fans is helped by the fact that Jonathan Quick has played very, very well this season and stepped up big when Igor first was injured and then was in a little bit of a funk. But be that as it may, I, I still think it's a uh, you know an impressive feat by Jonathan Quick that he won over these Ranger fans as fast as he did. And consider this, you know, Ranger fans, and I include myself in this, every move that they make, every trade, every signing, every uh, player called up, player sent down, player placed on waivers, whatever it might be, is always under a microscope. It's always under scrutiny. When the Rangers announced the one-year extension for Jonathan Quick uh, in the middle of the season, keep in mind, he's 38 years old now. When they announced that extension for one more year, I don't think anybody said anything bad about it. I don't think anybody had a problem with it. And I think the vast majority of Ranger fans felt really good about it. Now, of course, you know he is getting up there. He's got to turn 39 in the middle of next season. So anytime you're dealing with a player, you know, late 30s or maybe even early early 40s in some cases here, because um, we've seen some guys play into their 40s in this league, but there's always that risk that at any given point, they just might not have it anymore. But whatever small risk is there, I think it's worth taking. Like I said, Jonathan Quick has been fantastic this season, and by all accounts, he's a really good guy in the locker room as well. So congratulations to Jonathan Quick, and uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that he indeed uh, breaks that record the next time out. Not sure if the Rangers have announced a starting goalie uh, against the Flyers, but uh, we'll see. Um, you know, next time Quick's out there, he's going to have a chance to stand alone as far as uh, American-born goalies of all time are concerned. And speaking of milestones, we had Pierre Laviolette against the Bruins coaching in his 1,500th game. And, of course, he got the win there in dramatic fashion. The Rangers are down in that game, came storming back, and, um, you know, won just kind of a real grinded-out game with the Bruins. You know, the 5-2 to two final is a little misleading because the last two goals were empty netters, but whatever. You know, the Rangers went into Boston, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bruins, actually swept them, three straight wins for the Rangers against the Bruins this season, and got Peter Lavila a win in his 1500th game. Now, the Rangers posted a video of the post-game locker, locker room situ or celebration, excuse me, um, with Laviolette and all the players. And look, I mean, coaches tend to downplay their own little milestones. You know, it's his 1,000th game. It's his 500th win. You know, whatever it might be, not even just in hockey, really in any sport. But you got to believe, if you, if you really ask Peter Laviolette, if you really get him to tell you the truth, if he's coaching his 1,500th game, you got to believe he wants to win that game. And he did thank the, the players for getting that done for him in that game. It was really cool. Um, just a, a festive locker room for the Rangers. And I think um, Panarin was in this video because they were about to give out the Broadway hat. And Panarin, I think, was like telling somebody not to give it to him, even though he just had a hat trick. So just good stuff, man. You know, the vibes are just immaculate for the Rangers right now. You got to love it. Um, but as far as Peter Laviolette goes, 1,430 regular season games. Uh, well, that was coming into this season. Now, obviously, he's got another 70 or 71 with the Rangers. But coming into this season, he had 752 wins, 503 losses, 25 ties from way back in the day, and 150 overtime losses, and also 78 and 76 in the playoffs. Uh, three appearances in the cup finals with three different teams. We hope that soon becomes four and one Stanley cup win with the Canes back in 2006. And of course we hope that Pierre Laviolette is well on his way to uh, his second Stanley cup victory here. Cause obviously that would be very, very good for the New York Rangers. But you know, I, I talk about this with Kreider sometimes every time Kreider scores a goal, gets a point, scores a power play goal, plays a game. It feels like he's climbing higher and higher and higher on a lot of these New York Ranger all time lists. Well, Peter Laviolette's kind of doing the same thing as far as uh, coaches are concerned. You know, he's into the top 10 in a lot of categories, you know, top five-ish, um, you know, American coaches. He's high on all those lists, just coaches in general. He's very high there as far as, uh, you know, games coach and games won and the whole nine yards. I, I got to believe he's, you know, not at the very top, but he's climbing that that list of playoff wins as well. And uh, we hope he gets to pat his record there in the Stanley Cup playoffs this season as well. A couple other things I just wanted to mention here before we call it a day. Uh, the Panthers had defeated the Rangers twice this season before the Rangers got this very dramatic come from behind uh, shootout win against Florida uh, in their most recent game here. 
is it the end of the world if the Rangers lose this game and get swept by the Panthers in the regular season? No, it's not. And look, for them to face each other, a lot of things have to happen. Obviously, both teams are going to have to go on a nice run through the playoffs. But I still think, you know, you don't want to get swept by anybody, especially a team that seems to be one of the true heavyweights of the Eastern Conference, you know, the Eastern Conference in general. Um, of course, they represented the Eastern Conference in the finals last year, did the Panthers. So they're no joke. And it was just nice to see the Rangers, you know, go to toe to toe with them and uh, grind their way to a, a very difficult win. I know people have mixed feelings on the three on three overtime and the shootout and everything, but a win is a win. Rangers found a way to get it done and finally beat the defending Eastern Conference champion. So I thought that was big, even just from a psychological edge uh, for the Rangers. Just good stuff there. Also, the Rangers coming into this game had 21 come from behind wins this season. That's obviously now 22 and only Colorado and Dallas have more. So for all the people that like to say the Rangers have no heart, they have no grit. They don't care. And people say this, by the way, while, you know, they've got a record of like 21, four and one in their last 26 games or whatever it is, you know, it was in that ballpark. Um, I, I don't see that. I don't think there's any real rhyme or reason to that. And I think there's a lot of evidence to the contrary. Uh, for the people that say the Rangers, you know, don't have heart or don't have grit or this or that. When you're near the top of the league and come from behind wins, I think that says something. And the Rangers are right near the top of the league and come from behind wins. So good stuff there. Uh, Rangers right now, this is kind of interesting too. I just wanted to throw this out there. They have 11 games left in the regular season. Beginning on Tuesday, the Rangers from that night until the end of the season will play a game exactly every other night. So they play, they don't play, they play, they don't play on and on and on until the end of the regular season. I don't really have anything to add on that. I just thought it was kind of an interesting quirk of the schedule. But, you know, honestly, now that I think about it, not a bad way to end the season. I mean, you don't want any back-to-backs down the stretch, I don't think. Uh, enough of those. You know, the Rangers did awesome in back-to-backs, but I, I don't think you need a bunch of those right before the playoffs start. But I think it's also good because it kind of gets the Rangers into a rhythm. When you look at the Stanley Cup playoffs and the way the schedule is lined up, Typically, teams are playing every other night. So the Rangers are going to kind of get used to that, get into that rhythm, so to speak, of having one night where they play, then a day off, then they play, then a day off. Now, there's exceptions in the playoffs, of course. You'll get the odd back-to-back, or you might have a situation where um, you know there, there's two days off between games, you know, between games six and seven, five and six, whatever the case might be. Um, you know, that that's always possible. And then, of course, if you beat a team, uh, quickly, you know, if the Rangers can actually beat a team in four or five games, try not to laugh too much. I, I know they always have to make it dramatic, but if the Rangers can, you know, beat a team in say five games, you know, there might be extra days off there, of course. But for the most part, again, I, I think it's probably a good thing that the Rangers are getting into that rhythm of just playing every other day from now until the end of the regular season. And we as fans can even get into a little bit of a rhythm uh, there as well. The only other thing I wanted to mention, I thought this was kind of funny at the end of the game against the Panthers. So, Rangers win, obviously, you know, they're all heading down through the tunnel into the locker room and everything. And a couple of you guys pointed this out. I think the camera cut away just a little bit too quickly, but you had Kreider, you know, he was going to congratulate Matt Rempe. Rempe was leaving the ice and Rempe is obviously very tall. What did he say that he's like six foot eight and a half or something like that? Uh, Kreider, mind you, is six foot three, but to high five Matt Rempe, Kreider takes off his glove puts it on top of his stick and then holds his stick into the air for Matt Rempe to uh, high five Kreider's glove on top of the stick. So I thought that was pretty funny. And uh, again, you know, it, it's a tight knit group of players and you hope that, uh, you know, this is just the beginning right now because we got a whole nother season in front of us in the form of the Stanley cup playoffs and just cannot wait to see that happen. And obviously, you know, we'll, we'll continue to take in the regular season too and talk about everything going on here um, between now and the end of the regular season. But um, yeah, playoff hockey right around the corner. Cannot wait for that. Uh, once again, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. If you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.